It is a new app time and this is the app that will let you compile, run and test your code natively on your iPad Pro. There is a lot that is good about this app and there are some things that are not so good. So today we'll be looking at all those things and we'll be doing a slight comparison between other ways of coding on your iPad Pro. It's been a long time since I've seen an app this good available for free on your app store. And we need to see if all these great features are any good and how much is it better than other apps and does it really make a difference to the way you can code on your iPad Pro. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Navi and I like to make videos about tech products and programming tips and tricks. And if you like my videos, please consider subscribing to my channel to get notified when I post new videos. So without wasting any time, let's look at the first app which lets you code on your iPad Pro for absolutely free, which is called Carnets. It is a great app if you are especially a beginner because it has got this Jupyter notebook like layout which lets you write, run and test your code quickly. I really like its performance. In my use so far for 5 months it has worked well without any glitches and issues. As you can see it has got all these menu bars like you would have in a typical Jupyter notebook. Keep in mind that it has got this interactive mode and there is no script mode that I could find. In other words, this interactive mode lets you write your code and test it very quickly and it is not like a typical IDE where you can write and program all your scripts and then you run it in one batch. You can do that here as well with the cells but it lets you run a code in a cell and then quickly execute that cell. And honestly, I prefer interactive mode for its obvious advantages of running the code quickly and testing it. All right, let's open this app and see how the layout looks. So this is the app that I was talking about. As you can see, it gives you access to your all the drives basically where you can see and pick up any already existing notebook or you can create a new one. So let's see, we want to create a new notebook so it will open a layout. As I was mentioning previously, it brings you an interactive Jupyter notebook kind of layout where you can just type in and test your code. So as you can see, this resembles a Jupyter notebook. You will see all the menu bars available that you normally see in a Jupyter notebook like file where you can create new file, download as different things, etc. Then you get as an edit. We can do multiple edit related things with your cell. Then you have this view where you can change the view, uh, insert like insert cell above and below. I just told you the shortcuts for those commands. Then the cell, anything related to cell, what you want to do with those cells. Then kernel, which is like the engine which is running your code. You can restart that, you can reconnect, you can do a lot of things with that, like and some other menu bars like widgets and help. So this is basically what you will see in a Jupyter notebook layout as well. So this is completely mimicking that layout. So let's start with the first statement which is there in basically every programming language. Let's do that. Let's print hello world. Okay. I got the spelling wrong there. Okay. Hello world. So it also gives you the keyboard shortcuts that you otherwise use on MacBook Pro. Like control enter will execute the cell current cell and it will show you the result as you can see we are able to see hello world now like other shortcuts if you select this cell and click a you it will create a new cell over it uh, above it and if you select this cell and press b it will create a new cell below that so let's say we want we created a new cell below that and let's do some very simple mathematical equations Let's say a equals three and uh, let's print square of a. Again, control enter will print nine. If you don't want to do control enter, you can click on this run button and it will run. Okay. So that was a very simple tutorial about how you can do a primitive Python programming, but let's see about pandas and all. So you can select the cell, Double D, it will delete that cell. So press D twice and it will delete the cell. Okay, now you only have one cell. First of all, we want to import pandas. 
as PD. Okay. I again got the spelling right. All right. I'm still getting used to of typing on this keyboard, which is really good, by the way. All right. Once you have that, so let's say I want to create an empty data frame in pandas. So after importing pandas as PD, what I'll do, I'll just type PD equals to sorry data frame equals to PD dot. I'll say PD dot data frame and I will just print this data frame. Okay. You are not expected to see anything much here. Let's see. Yep. Empty data frame. All right, now we created this. Let's double click on this and press DD twice. It will delete that. So now what we want to do is we have declared, we have imported pandas. We have declared a data frame. Now we want to declare the data frame and we want to enter something into this data frame. So let me quickly add that in the data frame. After entering the data for your rows, now we will define the columns that you can do in this way. Name. Basically, we are creating a matrix for students with their marks. So name and now let's define some of the subjects. So let's say this is physics. Chemistry algebra and calculus and now after you have created the data frame now let's print this data frame and see how it looks data frame and press control enter as you can see whatever you entered is already coming here so one of the values is missing that is why it is giving you n a n so let's see what was that so we got okay so we should have done that all right let's run it again okay so as you can see this is a data frame that we have created and you can perform different statistical related operations here like mean median mode etc on this any of these rows or columns so that is very easy so this is how you can use pandas here so let's do one more thing let's create a new cell after this and see if we can import numpy this is another library that is really used a lot okay as you can see numpy is also getting imported if any of the libraries doesn't exist this is how you can install them just do exclamation pip install um, let's say you want to install dash and just run this as you can see it will be downloading i want to give you an example where it will not be able to download a library for you okay uh, uh, right i think we got an error so as you can see it is not letting me complete uh, there is some error that it is giving me and it is not letting me install it Similarly, Python text to speech x three. Let's say if we can install that one. See, we are getting an error again. So this app is really good as as I showed you, it can let you run Python and also let you run pandas, which is an advanced library for data science and data analysis. And you can do multiple things. In the next session, we will see how you can import a file using pandas in your iPad Pro. I know it is really easy when you're doing it on your MacBook Pro, but I want to explore and see the limits to which this app lets you code and program on your iPad Pro. There are obviously some restrictions like we saw some of them, like it is not letting you install all the libraries. There, It is giving you an error most of the times, but it does have a very good features. It does give you a Python Jupyter Notebook style uh, layout, which is really good for learning Python. So all in all, this is a really good app, which lets you run multiple things. And so far, I haven't seen any free app that lets you do all these things.
And if you want to run advanced data analysis and data science related code, then make sure to watch my previous video in which I showed absolutely free way of running advanced data analysis and data science related code where there is no restriction to the external library that you can import. You can import any libraries like Panda, Matplot, NumPy, Python text to speech, etc. You will find the link here and also in the description. Again, I'm still trying to explore more ways that lets us code on iPad Pro effectively. So if you come across any of those apps or ways, do let me know in the comment section. I would really appreciate that. And if you learned something new today, a like is really appreciated. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more such interesting videos and content. Like always, see you in the next one. Don't forget to exercise today.